blessed to be here again. How you doing? I'm doing real well. Man, I tell you, you've spoiled me rotten, Raul. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I love the cigars. You've watched me smoke them. Yeah, you really enjoyed them. I love them so much. <laughs> what can I say? I'm just born to be fired, and I'll smoke them anywhere, anytime. And if they don't like it, I hope they learn to. <laughs> That's a good. That's a there good have been one. a few women in my life that aren't women in my life because they thought I'd like them bearing my cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Rule, it has been a pleasure to get to meet you, visit with you, and smoke some great cigars with you that have brought enjoyment a variety of your RTS cigars over the last few days. The extended family feeling you embrace with your customers is a thing of beauty. Your cigars are rich, flavorful and tasty to me and the crew of Born to be Fired, and we want to thank you. And just so the readers know, yes, we did buy cigars, so we put our money where our mouth is. Thank you. It's a pleasure to me. From my experiences with each and every cigar you and your crew have rolled, I found zero inconsistencies, and I am qualified to say so. May I say to you readers, this is a treat for me. Having been in many cigar shops and smoked many, many, many cigars over an extended period of time on a daily basis, I have found Cigar Nirvana. I am now officially spoiled to the core of my born-to-be-fired self. There has not been any cigar aftertaste in the morning, not once, from your line of hand-rolled, and I do not mean handmade, your hand rolled cigars. My penchant for the strongest of strong cigars has been heightened by your Maduro line of cigars. It's like the difference between shifting through the gears of the most well tuned exotic car versus all other sports cars. Oh my. <laughs> you male readers could share one of Raul's RTS Maduro cigars. Well, a first-time female cigar smoker, and there would be no bite, and you wouldn't need train wheels. Of course, there are plenty of other cigars other than the Maduro cigars that I love so much. So, Raul, how did you get all your cigar expertise? How did it all get started? Well, it all started when I was, uh, you know, when I was in Cuba, like uh, 13 years ago. And this also goes to my family because, I mean, uh, my grandfather, for my mom part, they used to grow up uh, tobacco, and also, you know, I used to work in factories in Cuba for, you know, for some years. But I mean, I guess I get a, uh, you know, more experience here when you start running your own shop and then you start trying to make uh, other people happy for what you do so i mean that i guess this that's i guess my biggest experience when i start running my own shopping here in the united states what would you say are some of the differences between having a shop in the united states and rolling elsewhere well because in cuban you don't really need to be worried about how they taste how they draw because I mean, you're rolling for somebody. I mean, you're rolling for a for a factory, so they promote it, they sell it, and then you know, just because it's a big uh, company, and I mean, just because it's a big country on the cigar things, because it's a Cuban cigars, people like it no matter what. I mean, it's hard to find somebody that didn't like a Cuban cigar. So you know, just because I run a small shop, you need to be more dedicated because I mean, on a small shop and small brands people look for inconsistent for you know more defect on the brand just like with uh, craft beer makers or yeah. distillers yeah the, I, I I see this it's almost the same things I mean when you start doing something hand roll like you said because it's different between hand roll and handmade that's when you really need to start putting a little bit more effort and a little bit more passion to what you do because I mean Obviously, when things start for the for a scratch, people can find more, you know, defect on the on, on cigars, especially cigars. It's a pretty hard thing because it's 
a lot of people with a lot of passion for cigars, so they can find a, you know, a lot of things on a bad cigar. Obviously, you understand the need for firing yourself sometime during the day, taking a cigar moment, yeah. and then hiring yourself back quickly. That's a really a pleasure when you really have the time to enjoy the cigars, relax, and you know have a relationship with the smoking the cigars. This is pretty good. Bro, you've seen me smoke cigars way, way down. What do you have to say about that? It's, it's almost like me. I mean, I, I'm really enjoying it like, like you enjoy the cigars. I really want to smoke a cigar when I have the time to enjoy it. And then, you know, just, this is a special moment. I mean, it's... A point of meditation? Well, I mean, you can use it different way. If you like to meditate it, that's, I think, is the best time when you really want to concentrate it and when you really want to relax you know it's all matter on what type of things you like to do some people use it for meditation some people use it for relaxation i mean it's it's a whole work about smoking a cigar it's it's a, it's a beautiful thing yes i, I mean if you really want to enjoy it i mean just a smoke cigar for a smoke cigar is probably not a, a pleasure but you know when you really like cigars and you really enjoy the smoking cigars it's one of the best things that i ever done I mean, it's, it's a really enjoyable thing. Yep. I don't care if it's morning, late morning, noon, early afternoon, mid-afternoon, late afternoon, early yes. evening, or late evening. When yeah. you have the time to enjoy it, you definitely need uh, 20 to 30 minutes to have a peaceful time, a relaxation. I mean, like I said, whatever you like to do, cigars is a good compliment to get to that point. You know, Raul, there was, I've got a whole bunch of questions I want to ask you, and I kind of thought I had an order in which I was going to ask, but you bring up some things that make me just want to throw my order right out the window. <laughs> I guess that's part of the born-to-be-fired lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, you know, you mentioned 30 minutes. I will tell you that the cigars I've smoked of yours last longer than 30 minutes well it's depend on the size but i mean the regular sizes i mean like a robusto size or so i mean it's a minimum 30 minutes you know just for not a big cigar big size of cigar smoker you know some robusto some uh, smaller cigars take a little 30 minutes when if someone has a, to tend to another part of their born to be fired life and let the cigar go out what is the proper way to extinguish a cigar in order to take care of life's business and then to light it up later for full enjoyment. Just let him lit off. Just let, Just him, let him rest off, in huh? peace. Yes. Let him goes off and then, you know, it's actually better because, I mean, you know, it goes by itself. So then you don't have any bad taste when you lit it up back again. Let him set. Let him goes off and then, you know, whatever you want to light it up again, just clean the ash and then just make the same just go around it i mean make sure that everything is red and just Smoke start away, off yeah. eh? you know i've watched people take their cigar and grind it into the ashtray to come back to it later i see heartbreak on your face Raul. yeah because i mean it's it's not like coming the the way you should do it just let it goes off and then you know you don't break it down or you make sure the cigars fight it out back again, they're going to be the same way. You know, you just let them go off and then it's, I think it's the better way. Yeah, because you don't want to break that cigar up. Yes, I mean, it's just like uh, if you really feel passion for smoke, why well, just break it down? Just let them, let them set, let them go off and then just light it back. A lot of people that smoke cigarettes out there, they're used to <laughs> smashing. Yeah, it's and different. And cigarettes really don't put themselves out. Well, with the new paper, I guess it does, but it's not the same. What would you say over the years you've noticed? What's the difference between smoking a cigarette and smoking a cigar? Well, it's a lot of different things. I mean, first of all, cigars is all natural. It's a natural leaf. It's a natural everything. So you don't have any chemical, just water. Cigars is made out of everything, you know, just to moisturize or whatever. You just use water. Even when you grow out the plant, you just use water or some organic things that help them out to grow up. But I mean, it's not chemical involved in the cigars business, as far as I know. What about glue in cigars? It's made out of uh, the root of the plant that didn't have any taste, any flavor. It's 
just special for cigars. Actually, it's natural because you mix them up with water, so you don't need anything to mix them up. It's a powder, but it's made it out of a root of some plant, and then it's all natural. It's no chemical, so that's why is you know cigars is very natural things. That's a beautiful thing. Yes. Yes. So. What do you feel is essential uh, in your line of work to selecting the right tobaccos to roll up? Well, that's the hard part, I guess. I mean, you know, you need to go over different suppliers. You actually need to smoke and try different tobacco types in order to blend them out and then get the right flavor that you want. You have to take a lot of things in consideration. You know, like you mentioned, after taste, you know, different things. I mean, so it's a mix of different points in order to get a good cigar. Good burning, I mean, they should be burning good, have a good smoke. It's a, it's a couple of things. I mean, it's, you get it by the by tobacco from different parts. You, you're learning every day. So take a little bit of time to get all that knowledge. So just like I've tried to share with the born to be fired readers, life changes, plants change. Everything changes. Every time you buy tobacco, it's a different thing. Even if you buy it for the same people, it's, it's a plan. It's a different thing. I mean, they couldn't taste different. So you need to try them and you need to taste them every time in order for you to make sure that you have a consistent and your plan. So the plant is part of the universe. So when you smoke a cigar, you're embracing the universe. Yeah, right. Oh my, or if this isn't making people want to light up a cigar right now, I don't know what is. <laughs> and I can say there is a difference in your cigars rule than any cigars I've ever smoked. And I have never stayed with one line of cigar, but I've smoked so many different lines of cigars. As I mentioned, I truly love yours. Whether it's a female or a male, smoking a cigar for the first time. What suggestions do you have for them when choosing a cigar? I think for the first time smoker, it's better off if you go with a mild flavor, because I mean, when you're not used to it, can get you, you know, kind of dizzy or bad feeling. I mean, like you feel like drunk or whatever. But I think- Careful, that might make people just jump on up there no, the ones I, mean, I smoke it's, now. It's just, uh, you know, I think it's better off to start with mild cigar, get used to it, and eventually your taste is going to tell you when you're going to need to jump over the next flavor. Because, I mean, you know, after a while, mild cigars feel like, you know, smoking nothing. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, it's not that, you know, it's not a good cigar. But, you know, when you really smoke more and more, you start feeling that your palate need a little bit more flavor. So that's why it's a difference between mild medium and full body but you know some people just stick with the mild and they don't want to change it because they really enjoy it that's right viva la difference it's all about taste mm -hmm. but some people well i remember when i traded in my tricycle for my first bicycle <laughs> and then i remember my first three-speed bicycle then i remember my first five-speed bicycle yeah. and then my 10-speed bicycle yeah oh yes so it's, 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 it's pretty interesting things. I mean, when you really get into the cigar world, it's hard to, it's, it's, a, it's good. It's a good experience. So tell us about all the different cigars that you have. Actually, the wrapper is the one who bring most of the flavor on, t on cigars. That's why, you know, sometimes when people looking for uh, Romeo and Juliet flavor or Monte Cristo flavor, it's kind of wrong things I mean you actually look for all these is brands I mean cigars goes by flavor mild medium and full body it's all depend on the type of wrapper you put it on that what is get the, the flavor to the cigars it's all about what you use inside but I mean most of the flavor came out of the wrapper so that's why just having the same inside just changing the wrapper you got a totally different flavor of cigars so uh, there are a lot of different names back there in your humidor for these cigars? Well, it's just uh, things that I make up just to make a difference between all the things. I mean, 
torpedoes, the SK Zeros, it's just name it. Like, you know, like all the brands use uh, Romeo and Juliet, Monte Cristo. I use my brand, but also put like a nickname on it. I mean, RTS, Torpedo, uh, RTS is the main brand, and just some, and name it for the, for the shape, some others just for like different way to recognize. Like for instance, you know uh, one crew member that likes that one particular cigar of yours, it's kind of, has a more skin. Yeah, so because some people, it's also good recommendation for beginners, I mean, they should start it with a thinner cigar, so that's the way, you know, they don't have to go through a lot of smog. They probably don't like it, they probably don't enjoy them, so it's better off to start with a skinny, smaller. So there's less smoke in the air? Oh, not less smoke, it's just, uh, you know, it's just because the ring gauge is thinner, so you're obviously going to get less smoke out of it. So bigger ring gauge is going to get more smoke because it's bigger area. And it's more oxygen on the biggest ring gauge because it's more lead. So make the cigar smoke. Right, like the 60 ring gauges I like. Yeah, it's a big ring gauge, so you got a lot of leave a lot of things and a lot of oxygen inside the tobacco so that's why you get a lot of smoke out of it mm -hmm. bring it on Ralph. Yeah, bring so it on. You know, that, that's when you feel the full smoke in your mouth when you got a big cigar how do people find a cigar which makes them find that special relationship after they've tried all these how do they find the one that gives them that oh so sweet pleasure in life the righteous cigar. It's just a people taste. Some people don't like uh, bitter, so that's why they enjoy more mild. Some people like feel the bitter on, the, on their smoke, so that's why some people like a full body flavor. So, you know, it's all about taste. And, and by the way, should we, uh, when we get the radio station up for Born to be Fired, uh, if it's all right with you, we might want to air this interview on the radio station. Yeah, it's not a problem. Because face it, those people out there don't like yours and my voice. <laughs> uh, what are they going to like, right? Nah, they're all got a good be voice for, for being on the radio. radio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what advice do you have regarding lighting a cigar? Well, I guess the proper way to light it up is like Kai explained to you later. I mean, just you know, heat them up and then make sure that it's all red. And then after that, you just, uh, I don't know how to say that. You, you blow on it. Blow it. And then, you know, once you it's all red, then make sure that the cigars is, uh, is enough hot. So then Pop that, the that, that way it's better. Because, I mean, all the cigars is tending to burn more even that way. Yes. So that way you don't have any channel. Yep. Yep. How about cutting a cigar when you go to bust that cap, as I call it? <laughs> What's the best way to bust the cap? All depend on the type of quarter that people like. I mean, some people like a straight quarter, some people like B quarter, some people like punch. I mean, it's I guess it's all about like the flavor of cigars. It just depend on what people like more. Some people don't like to bust the cap like you said, so they use B quarter or they use punch. Some people like to have a lot of smoke out of a cigar, so they just have a straight quarter. Yeah, they know like, I'm chronic when they see me use that straight cutter on that 60 ring gauge. Yeah, huh? well, oh, just yeah. because, like, it's, like you said, some people like to have a lot of smoke, and some people just like to keep the look of the cigar, so that's why they just use a big cutter or punch. Now, when it comes to smoking the cigar itself, yes, the act of smoking the cigar, what would you suggest to people? Like I, like I mentioned before, just have a time to enjoy like 30, 45 minutes, depend on the ring gauge, and relax and enjoy the, the cigar. It's chill time. Well, normally you don't inhale it. Some people do it, but I mean, you normally feel all the flavors in your mouth without have to inhale it. I guess that's one of the biggest difference between cigar and cigarette, because on a cigarette, you don't really get any like a flavor like cigar has it but i mean it's all all the flavor goes in your mouth so you don't really need to inhale it in order to uh, get puff. the flavor yeah you just smoke and then you feel all the flavor in your mouth right and if you're sitting there with your lady or your man sharing a cigar as snoop dogg says puff puff pass 
as President Clinton says, don't inhale. Well, I mean, it's normally... That's why he got a cigar. Yeah, you, don't, you normally don't inhale it because you don't get any other flavor out of the cigar just because you inhale it. So you don't really need to do it because all the flavor is in the, in the smoke. So it doesn't make any sense to inhale it. I'm with you. So you don't really need to inhale the smoke in order to get more flavor or something like that. Some people get sick if you inhale so much. Yeah, yeah, that's also too because it's strongest. It's actually strongest. It's pure tobacco. It's pure tobacco. It's, the concentration of, of a nicotine on tobacco, I guess, is more than on a cigarette. Yeah, a cigarette. Not even mention that you know the ring gauge on tobacco is bigger. So I guess if you got if you can have a cigarette as big as the cigar, couldn't inhale it either because you're gonna get really sick. Well, things with cigarettes. Cigarettes, uh, they have very little tobacco in it because you have a lot of chemicals that they put into it. And that's why you have to inhale deeper. They have, also have the filter and, and they got the flavors so you can taste it. Otherwise, you wouldn't taste anything. You have one night nothing chemical. Plus, you got radiation that they put into it so it burns evenly. That's why cigarettes, comparing cigarettes to, can to, to cigars is like comparing water to Coca Cola. Uh, you know, just because it's water and Coca Cola doesn't mean it's water. Yep. It's the same thing. So, Raul, you know, a lot of people want to know some things. Like, for instance, we talked about your background being from Cuba. Yep. And you're working in the cigar factories in Cuba. You know, they all come with this question. They go, hey, Zeke, is a Cuban cigar the best? What do you have to say? Well, I mean, you know, I guess it's like anything else. I mean, I guess it's like whiskey. Some people feel like several whiskey from countries are better than other one. I guess all goes on the on the soil, on the weather. I mean you definitely feel a difference between Cuban cigars and other. But I mean it's nothing you can blame it on on somebody just because they don't make Cuban cigars, they don't do a good cigars. It's like anything else. Cuban cigars are good because that country was made for I guess for that. I mean they got a good soil, good weather. It's just a special for that. So when God thought about, hey, let's do some cigars, I think this island called Cuba would be a good place to, you yeah. know, roll out. I uh, like the Cuba. cigar started in, in Chile. Yeah. Tobacco Cub started in Chile. What? Some Cuban, Cuban seed, for instance. A lot of Cuban seeds sold to be grown other places. Oh, yeah, and they don't they even, even taste the same. Wine. That's a good point. Even a mono. 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 Even, uh, even people can't see it out of the Cuban and, and they put it in different you country you, you can get a close flavor to Cuban but I mean it's not going to be the same because I mean it's in a special kind not even in Cuban you can get a good tobacco in all the, the island it's several places in Cuban that got the good soil the good weather to grow up a uh, good tobacco and by the way if we do use this uh, as a, a radio broadcast later uh, anybody that would be listening understand when you hear other voices in the background uh it's part are, of the crew we are at raul's cigar shop and uh hey it's a lively place and cigar smokers enjoy putting now, their two cents worth in because hey yes. they love cigars it's part of the family like that's now right. rts is joined to the born to be fire family that's correct <laughs> yeah pretty much everyone comes in here it's like family we all sit down yeah. and talk. Even strangers that you've never met to sat down with cigars and start talking. Um, okay. We're talking in regards to the cigars. Uh, the flavor comes down to basically personal choice, whoever likes it the most, as far as Cuban or not. Um, Cuban, Cuban does the Cuban cigar because of the soil, because of the environment, does provide a good, rich flavor. But it also goes down to the fact of the tradition, uh, the way that the cigar is actually hand rolled, the way the mix and the blends are put together. That actually makes a whole point of it. Um, when you have a good cigar roller, people that actually know what they're doing, they could roll the cigar in a certain way that you'll get the full benefit of the flavor. Where you could get the same actual tobacco and have two different rollers. One has the experience, one doesn't. You're going to have two different flavors. Um, you're going to get a, a sweet, you know, savory cigar from one roller, and the other one's going to be bitter because they don't know how to roll it. It's, just, it's because of the airflow, the way the actual all combines together. It's like a work of art. Sometimes you got to take care of business, and Raul's real busy. And I'm glad because that'll keep him rolling and keep his store open. 
You know, uh, everybody I've met that comes into this store, even if it's their first time, is treated like family. And then to meet your extended family is a beautiful thing too, Raul. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's there's something that people are going to want to know. How does somebody know if the cigar they are buying is a quality cigar, whether it's one of your masterfully rolled cigars? Or another cigar at any other cigar shop. How do you know a, a good cigar? One of the things that make us different is because everything here is handmade fresh. Hand rolled fresh. Yes, hand rolled fresh. So I guess that's one of the main difference. And then, you know, uh, I think people can tell the difference because they keep coming back. So if they aren't blessed with being real close to your store, and let's say they're up there in Maine or New Jersey or... California, or Montana, or Minnesota, and they go to their cigar shop that's close to them, how do they know how to pick a cigar out? Well, if they enjoy the hand roll fresh cigars, they definitely need to call RTS. Otherwise, trying to look for a probably house brand or something that they're probably going to get you a similar quality or freshness on the, on the hand roll cigars. I mean, it's hard to say that because, I mean, you don't know other people stores. In that case, probably they should ask for a hand roll house brand or something has to do with a hand roll cigars. Right. But no matter what, it also comes down to trying them. Oh, yeah. Smoke them. Or just uh, give them a call to RTS and they can get the fresh and, and you know, all the quality from uh, hand roll cigars. All the love from Raul. Yes. That's true. So, and then we also ship them to them if they, you know, they want them. Yep, I'm with you. Get that postage ready, Rob. All right. So uh, what would you like to share with Born to be Fired readers that you haven't shared so far? Anything I haven't asked? Well, it's, it's pretty good experience. I guess, you know, that some people are interested in what you do and, you know, let them know other people. What you do is a, it's a beautiful thing. Which came first, Raul? Now, somebody asked me, and they can find this in the Ask Zeke tab. Someone asked me one time, which came first, the chicken or the egg? So, Raul, which came first, the seed or the plant? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them. Yes. If you can get them, it's marking that you're really going to enjoy it. Roll All up. the way through. <laughs> All the way through. It's just the beginning. It's just started. That's right. Well, hey, Roel, thank you very much for your time. And thank you very and much. Inside. It's a pleasure to me. And uh, we'll just keep on smoking. Oh, yeah. And keep, keep enjoying on firing them. ourselves and hiring ourselves back. Keep on sharing with uh, Born to be Fire uh, people. That's right. That's all about. That's it. Spread the joy and the love. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Roel. Thank you. Thank you.